Good morning, everybody. Um, just wanted to kind of make a tutorial here for everybody. Um, one of the questions that has been brought up occasionally to me um, since we have sort of the e-learning thing going on across the state right now is a lot of the teachers in my district were asking about how to do sort of screen recording on their computer um, and how to create some lessons to be able to just hand out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the software. I used to do this at home. Everything I'm going to show you is free software. It's uh, open source software, so it's available and it's open for pretty much any platform that you want to use. Um, I think what we're starting to realize is there's lots of software that the districts have purchased for people to do this, but it's on their computers at school and we're not allowed to go to school, so we can't really use it. Um, so hopefully this will help you set up sort of a more sustainable way to do this uh, for the long term. And hopefully it's tools that you will find useful um, uh, during the year as well. So what we're going to begin with here is I am going to switch over. You can see right now I've got a website. I just have the Indiana Gear Up website just so I had something here to show you guys. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is basically how to get uh, people where you want them to be. So we're going to use a piece of software called Open Broadcaster Studio or OBS. Um, now, I will tell you right now that this is a very intimidating program when you first <laughs> open it up uh, it has lots of little knobs and switches and I will the thing that I would kind of remind people is that 90% of what is there you can just leave as stock that's typically what I do and I even kind of know what I'm doing um, it really is for what we want to use it for very simple to use um, now like I said it is free software it's available on all sorts of platforms now I will say you need a real computer and I'm doing that in air quotes if you have a Chromebook none of this is going to work um, so you do need access to something with a real operating system so Windows Mac OS Linux uh, I also happen to know that OBS runs on BSD um, so if you're really far out there running crazy stuff you can you can actually still run this software um, now, OBS was initially created to for video game streamers, so we're kind of going to kind of repurpose that a little bit for what we want to do, but uh, because it is that powerful, uh, that's where all those little knobs and switches come from. So you do want to go to the website. It's uh, https colon backslash backslash obsproject.com, or you can just type in OBS into some web search, and it will get you there. It's fairly well known and widely used. Um, if you click on one of these right here, Windows, Mac, or Linux, it will automatically start down. Well, Windows and Mac will automatically start downloading the package for you. Linux is a little trickier. Um, most of you probably will not be doing that. If you are, just let me know, and I'll help you walk through that one. That's uh, a little different. Um, but you just go there. You download it and you run it and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you what that actually looks like uh, oh, wrong one so right here and I'm showing you because uh, right now we have sort of infinite scroll <laughs> you can see back all the way uh, which is really fun if I grab it and just sort of wiggle it yeah I don't know that was just for me and my my own uh, amusement but this is what you're going to see um, actually I'm going to switch to a better view of it here let me get rid of this and it's it's the same thing, but you're, it's a little cleaner because I can get rid of everything but the white background. Um, really, what you're going to play with on this is this bottom section right here. Uh, this is where all the controls are that you, you really need to do. I would say everything from the color part right here all the way over, really, you don't need to touch any of that. It's, it's fairly simple. Um, you may have to do a little bit with audio right here once you get that set up. What we're really going to pay attention to are these two... Uh, boxes here to the left hand side the scenes box and the sources box this is how you're going to get things to be on the screen okay so in this case I have four things set up on the side four scenes we've already seen the first one let me switch back that's the OBS website and I have a couple of other websites loaded up there to show you guys I have OBS itself I have open board which you're which is right here. And I'm actually going to shout this one out too. This is a good program uh, to use. It's also free. It's also open source, usable across multiple platforms. This is basically an interactive whiteboard, just like the one you probably have in the front of your room. Um, but it's you can use it on your computer at home. There's no licenses. You don't have to worry about, it. did this get paid for? Um, and it does most of the things you probably expect in, uh, an interactive smart board to do. The nice thing is, is you can take and draw. Let me see. I'm doing this with a mouse, which is not the best. I'll just make a little smiley face here. Ooh, he's a little wide. Okay, but that's good enough. We'll do that. So you can draw, change colors, do all the things you kind of expect to do with this. Um, it's very good. I have a little drawing tablet that I use to uh, do lessons with this. So that that is a good um, 
way to show kids things uh, interactively. And let me go back to the website. I'll show you the website for OpenBoard as well. Uh, I need to actually go over here and switch. And so this is the open board website. Uh, it's a little bit different. It's HTTPS colon backslash backslash www.openboard.ch. Um, but once again, this is available for any platform and it's completely open source. And there's lots of tutorials on this site that you can go through and I'll show you how to use it. Um, but really, if you're used to using an interactive smart board, you're going to be okay. You're going to understand how this works. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about, so we've talked about how these scenes are all here and how I can switch back and forth. I'm doing it really fast to kind of prove how simple that is. And I do that by just clicking on one of these on this side. When I do that, um, let me get rid of this. When I do that, it will switch to that scene that I have set up. So if I wanted to add another scene, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of open board here. Buy open board. Yes, go away. Okay. So I have gotten rid of open board. You can look down here in my scenes and it's completely gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it back in. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in, in the process. Like I said, sometimes this looks different depending on what platform you're on. Um, but in general, it's pretty much the same. So I'm going to go here and you should be seeing a thing that says add scene and it says scene two. I'm going to change that to open board. And I like to give them names so I know what it is that... That, that is happening here. <laughs> now, when I do this, it's actually going to uh, click over to it. So give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay. So I have that added down here. And if I click on it, it switches me off. So I can't really show you uh, what happens. But basically, this sources list goes empty. And it has a little message about how you need to add sources. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you by adding the sources that I already have here. Um so I go down to the plus, and when I pull it up, I get this little menu, and there's lots of different things I can do. Uh, window capture is what I use most of the time. It will capture a specific window. So like right now, OBS is its own window. Um, so it captures that, and that's all I, I need to worry about. Uh, if I want to capture a web browser, I just say, okay, my this instance of Firefox, this window of Firefox is what I want to do. Um, doing it by the window capture makes it a lot easier to kind of keep things separated um, into different scenes. You can also just do what I did uh, on screen capture over here. It's just a screen capture. It captures whatever's on your screen. Um, so you can switch all your stuff without using OBS and just sort of pulling things up and just have one scene that is just a screen capture of what's going on. Um, you can also do images. You can do uh, video capture. So if you have a webcam, you can put a little video of yourself on here. I do that a lot with kids when I'm doing these things. You can type on here. Um, you can play music, all sorts of things. Like I said, this was built for video game streamers. So there are lots of options. Um, but usually if you're doing something, you're going to want a window capture, a video capture, or a screen capture. That's the big three that you're probably going to wind up using. Um, so you'll select that and that will be here. Um, so like in this case, screen capture is right there. Now, the other thing you need to do is an audio capture. If you don't do audio capture, you're not going to get audio. So you go in and for me, there's three audio capture things. Um, this is pretty Linux specific that there will be three. You will probably only have one or two. Um, and you just kind of want to click on it and do the default settings. If you're getting audio, you'll see the bars here light up. Um, and sort of the rule of thumb for this is called a VU meter for people who aren't into audio tech stuff. Um, the idea is that you want to be talking and you want it to be in the yellow most of the time. It can occasionally brush the red, but 99% of the time you want to stay in the yellow. That usually means you have a good sound. And you can adjust that by grabbing this, dragging this uh, little button down here and I can make myself quieter, 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 quieter and I can make myself really loud. Um, I've adjusted it to where having it full blast is pretty much exactly where I need it to be. Um, if you want desktop audio, you would have to go in, like there's a video or something playing, you would go in, you would add audio, and you would switch it to desktop audio, and then that would be here. Um, if you have a mic, uh, like right now I've muted my computer mic and I'm using a separate mic, you probably will use your desktop audio mic or your mic aux. Um, you can just play around with the audio here. I will tell you audio is probably the hardest thing to figure out on this. Uh, but it, usually if you poke around enough, you will get it. Um, you just want to make sure that all of your scenes that you have laid out have some audio with it. See, I switched over to open board and it didn't have any audio and then it disappeared. So really, that is, that's really what it is. These two boxes, you just want to create a scene. You want to add some sort of visual element and some sort of audio element. And then you will adjust your audio here. Um, every scene has different audio settings. So you probably want to just double check and make sure that you've 
gone through all these and set them up. Now, I'll show you right now, OBS, uh, let me do website. Uh, to show you right now, let me go to screen capture. Right now, you're sort of seeing uh, a picture of the window. If I go here and I hit screen capture, or I just go up here and click on the window, I can actually resize this and make it as small as I want, or I can literally make it as big as I want. Um, you just want to make it fit in the black box that you have. Anything that's in that black box will be recorded. And um, as long as you do that, you can you can actually have multiple things on one scene. I could have this, and then I could add a webcam and put it in the bottom. Actually, that's probably not a bad idea. Let me make a little change here. just so you can sort of see what this looks like. So I'm in screen capture. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do a video capture device. Um, it says create new. I'm just going to leave it default. And then right here, you can see that it has, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me move it over because you're seeing my webcam. Let me make him smile smaller and move this guy over so you can see it. So it has my webcam, it has camera. I can, there's a lot of things to change. I'm just going to leave it all default because that's easy. I need to adjust my camera so you can actually see me. There we go. And then I can actually take this and I can move it around. I can move it down here. I can make myself big. I can make myself teeny tiny. I can do all those things. Um, and this will be recorded as part of the video that I do. I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want to see myself. Yes. Okay. We got rid of that. So you once you get everything set up, that's the hard part. The easy part is just recording it, making it happen. So you've got that's where these controls on the side come in. Now there is a streaming component. If you're somebody who's pretty tech savvy and you want to do a live stream with your kids, um, that is fairly easy. Uh, depending on where you want to do it, uh, probably the two biggest places people do it is YouTube and Twitch. Um, you would have to set up an account. There's there's lots of things to do with that. Um, it may not be where most of us are, but you can actually customize this to where it streams directly to those places, to where you could have a live chat back and forth with kids. Um, probably not something that we're all ready for. So what I do most of the time is I use the recording feature. And so usually this says start recording. Um, right now it says stop because I am recording. You hit that and it will record the video that you make directly to your hard drive, and then you can upload that to wherever you want it to be, whether it's a school-based thing or YouTube or whatever. Um, but once you have that, that's really recording everything you need for a lesson. Um, between using Open Broadcaster Studio and Open Board and whatever web browser you have, you can probably put together some pretty compelling lessons um, just like that. So as always, if you need any help, please reach out to me or your regional director, and they will get you in contact with me, and we will get you figured out and hopefully make this as painless as possible. Talk to you guys later.